If we were making this video in 2003, right after Pete Sampras retired, it would be 100% correct to say he is the greatest tennis player. But it's 2023, and so much has changed since then. We've lived through a pandemic, iPods are pretty much outdated, ordering pizza is a thousand times easier, and tennis has been dominated by the big three. Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic, and Roger Federer. Yet, if there was ever a party for all the goats in the world of tennis, Pete Sampras would definitely be getting an invitation. Here's one fact that almost every tennis buff knows. Pete Sampras has got a total of 64 single career titles. And here's the question that comes right after that fact. How good was this guy that he won 64 titles in a 14-year career? So let's talk about that. How good was Pete Sampras? And what was the secret to his success? Chapter 1. Pistol Pete Pete Sampras had a pretty cool nickname, Pistol Pete. And it wasn't because of how well he handled firearms, but because his serves flew as fast as a bullet from a pistol. Born in 1971 to Costas Gus Sampras and Sarah Steinberg in the United States, Pete turned pro at the age of 17. And two years later, he won his first Grand Slam in style at the US Open. His career would go on to span over a decade, resulting in 14 Grand Slam singles titles. Even though Pete officially hung his rackets up in 2003, this record still stood in the male players category till 2009 when Roger Federer won at the French Open. During his career, Sampras did also win seven Wimbledon singles titles, five US Open titles, 1994 and 1997. But for some weird reason, this guy never got his hands on the French Open trophy. But uh, that's kind of badass for a guy who played in the 90s. Pete Sampras could be easily described as the prince of the 90s. I mean, his domination was so prominent that his record stood for six years after he retired. Chapter 2. Understanding the Stats and His Style of Play Pete Sampras played at the professional level for 14 years, and during this time, won 14 major Grand Slam titles. This meant that every year, this guy was going home with at least one trophy tucked at his back seat. And his competition? They were just as skillful and talented as he was. He played at the time of Andre Agassi and Boris Becker, so winning while they were playing was definitely not easy. Also, let's try to really understand what it meant to play in the 90s. For starters, the best style of play was the serve and volley. So if your serves were basic, you might as well kiss goodbye to major trophies. But since Pete Sampras had somehow mastered the style, it was very easy to use his strength to become one of the best. But this style wasn't just about the players, the courts were also not modified to fit other styles of play. So it didn't really matter if you could play other styles, if you played on these courts, you better know the style that matters. The tennis rackets could also be described as old school, and were barely as advanced as the ones we have now. Today, rackets give the players more control and power, and they can hit the ball way harder than older rackets could. So this means that if you really wanted to serve as a tennis player in the 90s, you had to be very fast, and your reaction time had to be top notch. This is because you'd need to counter the fast bounces created from big serves, and also handle ground strokes with ease. Now, this meant that players who wanted to win big had to master two tricks. Be able to dish up an incredibly sick serve, and also know how to hold your own serve. And these two tricks were all that Pete needed to master to boss everyone else around. He was also able to quickly adapt to every new condition the game threw at him. And till today, his serve volley record is still the best around. And it's kind of the only thing the big three has failed to do better than Pete. Having a killer serve is great. But if Pete really wanted to be considered as the GOAT, he needed way more than that. Pete would improve to the point that he became one of the best returners and baseline players, and with these three skills, Pete was the avatar who had mastered the important elements. The way Pete handled his serves also meant that he could dictate the outcome of a game before it even started. So if you were his opponent, you might get so pressured to the point of soiling your pants. Speaking of winning, you know how some players beat everyone in their path but can't bring that same energy when they have a big match? Well, Pete Sampras wasn't like that. When it came to big matches, Pete was unbeatable. I mean, this guy played 18 Grand Slam finals and lost only four. That's some crazy stats right there. 
Pete was known to always have these insane clutch moments where he displayed impeccable mental strength in the most delicate situations. At the end of the day, everyone began to see him as a big match player, and the big dogs of the 90s sort of pissed in their pants when they got drawn with Pete. In fact, Mats Wielander, a former number one, said that Sampras always had a lot of guts in big time moments, after an 18-year-old Pete dealt with him in the first rounds of the 1989 US Open. I guess Mats was speaking from experience. Sampras was also as fast as the Flash, and perhaps even more athletic. He could move around the pitch at the speed of light, and this trick allowed him to be able to play different styles during a game. If he met a player who enjoyed playing from the baseline, Pete wouldn't have a problem. If he then met a player who didn't, he could easily dominate them from the net, or from the back of the court. The 90s was about strength, an ability to defend and execute, and most importantly, quick reactions. But the 90s was also about constant career-ending injuries. While we might never know for sure, Pete Sampras could have played for another decade if he had access to some of the medical technology we have now. But there's an interesting counter-argument from the other side of the fence. Here's what they say. Pete Sampras could never achieve all he did in the post-90s era because of his serve volley style. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. Pete Sampras didn't just dominate the game during the early and mid-90s, but also in the early 2000s when the serve volley style was completely out of play. But I wouldn't exactly describe one Grand Slam trophy as dominant, since he had a back-to-back -back loss in 2000 and 2001 but he finally got one before he retired, so you be the judge of that. In the early 2000s, the style had changed to the baseline style of play, which had grown more popular and acceptable, and the master of this style was none other than Andre Agassi. But guess what? When Pete and Agassi would eventually go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Pete Sampras would show him who's boss. Chapter 3. Would Pete Sampras defeat any of the big three? Now, I can guess the question on the mind of almost everyone watching this video. Who would win in a match between Pete Sampras and Roger Federer, Novak Djokovic, or Rafa Nadal? If I had the power to create a future that never existed, I would immediately create a competition where these guys could play themselves. But since I can't do that, we would have to rely on the statistics. So let's get started this way. If Pete was to face any of these three in a serve volley match, it's very likely that Roger Federer is the only one who would defeat Pete. Why is that? Well, way before Roger Federer retired, he used to incorporate the serve volley style into his game. And since strength and quick reactions were a major part of the style, we can't really say if the big three would have been able to change their style to fit that of the 90s. And Roger Federer and Pete Sampras actually played back in 2001. And even though Federer won, Pete took him on an entertaining five-set ride. Let's take a look at one more not-so-boring stat. Pete Sampras enjoyed a career record of 762 to 222, which gives him a win percentage of 77.4%. Roger Federer, on the other hand, had a win percentage of 82.0%. Rafael Nadal has 82.9%, and Novak Djokovic, the modern tennis god, holds a record of 83.6%. While Pete's record cannot go one-on-one -on -one with these guys, isn't it kind of fascinating that he still remains in the conversation of who the greatest is? Chapter 4. Criticism Against Pete Sampras Now, let's face it, Pete Sampras wasn't the most popular guy around during his time. In fact, the American audience in general preferred his more vocal rival, Andre Agassi. Most didn't just prefer Andre because of the fact that he said everything on his mind when he wanted to, but also because of their styles of play. Many who watched the two complained that Pete had a boring style of play that fully relied on the serve volley style. They also argued that Pete was only dominant on fast surfaces where he could easily run. This meant that he would have no problem with grass and hard courts, but would find it difficult to play on a clay court. But despite these accusations against a really dedicated player, he kept winning like it was no big deal. If this forces you to question Pete Sampras's versatility and adaptability, then you should take a few hours to watch his best highlights. But most importantly, the Big Three has destroyed Pete's record of 14 Grand Slams, but none can hit the ball as hard and as fast, and did I mention hard, as Pete. Chapter 5. Pete Sampras's Influence on the Game if you've been following closely, you already know that Pete had the best serve around, 
and he always managed to dominate his opponents and control the outcome of a game. He also never bowed to pressure, but made it bow to him instead. And when he had big games, he handled them like the big player that he was. But what made him truly invincible was his ability to adapt to games as quickly as necessary. If he met a baseline player, then he could do baseline. If today, it's impossible to find the actual number of people who have adopted this style. But it's obvious that thousands rather than be aggressive towards your loved ones, grab a racket and learn to give a badass serve. Now, some might argue that being mentally strong doesn't really matter in a game of tennis. Are you kidding? For starters, Pete's entire career proves that wrong. If you want to become the best as a tennis player, then you must be willing to improve your mental fortitude, build your resilience, and become an all-round better player. Pete Sampras was arguably the best during his time, as he has a 20-14 win record against his biggest rival, Andre Agassi. If Pete Sampras had chosen to hang around for just a little while, do you think he'd reach the level of the big three? Or do you think the style of the 90s had a positive impact on his game? Let us know what you think in the comments section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to learn more interesting things about your favorite tennis players.